this project will probably turn out to be one of our most aggressive, if not the most aggressive. What we're going to do is take a sports photograph and the end result will be to use a laser engraver to cut out that sports photograph which has been adhered to a piece of acrylic so as to make a stand-up award. We'll use several of the Corel Graphic Suite tools to accomplish this. And we'll start off first in Corel Paint. First thing we'll do is open a file. and I'm going to select a file called Alex Karate. As soon as that comes in, then I'm going to call a couple of things to your attention. One part of the interface is not standard, and that's this part right here, the mask overlay. If you do not have this icon in your icon bar, then you may need to back up to one of the previous videos and, and set up Corel Photo Paint where that is available. Alternatively, if you have not done that, we can click on mask and mask overlay right here in every time that we'll talk about using the icon out on your display. But that should be there and for right now let's turn it off. This is on and this is off. So turn that off. Then let's go to our zoom level field and tell it to fit. Now we've fitted the entire graphic to the available space. Let's work on our tolerance. Let's make it a tolerance of let's say 5. And then before we get started let's go to the mode and click on the normal mode. That'll allow us to uh, do a little bit of testing here. Then we're going to go to the mask tool. Click on the right, lower right hand corner of the mask tool where we see this little black triangle. That will cause the fly out to be exposed. And then we're going to click on the magic wand tool. Then click out in the area somewhere and the magic wand performs its function. Its function is to take the pixel on which we click it and others around it that are similar in color. We have a tolerance of 5, so it really uh, didn't select nearly as much of the color as we had hoped. So let's go to about 20. Then we'll click maybe in a different area. But now it's selected possibly too much. Notice a part of our object here is uh, selected is mask off also. So we'll uh, click now on remove the mask or clear the mask and we'll put 10. We'll click out with that tolerance. That looks about what I expected. Now that we have a portion of it selected we'll Tell it we'd like to add to that, so we'll go to the additive mode. That'll keep the existing mask and add to it. I'm in a habit of not clicking out in the middle of this, but click very close to an existing mask and just grow it into what we need. That looks like pretty close to what we need. Now that we have a pretty good uh, mask area, let's click on our mask overlay and we'll see what we have. At this point we have mask away the object itself so that we cannot change anything where the, let's call it the mask or the masking tape or mask is. The only changes can be out here in what, the, in what we call the selected area. Let's zoom up on that, the main part of an object, possibly the head. 
but we'll see here we're a little close in some areas where that where the uh, hair is relatively similar to the background. We don't see that problem when there's a significant change here. But let's work on that a bit. Instead of the out instead of the magic wand, let's expand the fly out again and select the brush mask tool. And let's set the brush mask to about 70. Now let's start with 50 first. And then um, we're, we're going to need to click on the minus button here. And what we're doing is actually taking away, we're subtracting minus from the selected area the selected area being that which we can make modifications in. I'm just clicking as we go around here. If you have a good hand you could just drag this. I don't have a very good hand so I normally just uh, click in an area here. Have a little better control. It takes a little longer though. And having done that, now we're going to turn the mask overlay off. See if we see it just may possibly toggle that back and forth and you'll get a feel for the difference there. And then uh, let's turn it back on. There we have an overlay really showing the mask area. Here I'm going to tell it to invert it. This is the invert the mask. So now we've protected all the area outside the object and selected the area inside. So now if we were to go to our eraser tool, we can't select, we can't erase anything out here. We can erase things in here, however, which we really didn't want to do that. So let's uh, edit and undo the eraser tool. Then we'll zoom back out. Now that we have this done, we're going to go to, we're going to check what our fill tool is. Right now the fill tool is white. Possibly we should take a moment to explain these in case you haven't uh, picked up on what these tools are down here in previous videos. But this is your fill tool here. Uh, excuse, yeah, fill tool. And this is the paint tool and this is the background color since the we're going to fill this area with black so we want to change the fill from white to black so we're going to press the right mouse button notice that became black so the fill is all we're concerned with right now but since we're talking about that I'm going to double click uh, left click the blue Notice that changed our foreground color. And then just for kicks, I'm going to uh, control click yellow. And notice that changed our background color. Let's go just a little farther with that. Let's go to our eraser now. The eraser erases our selection down to whatever the page color is. That's what we just now set to yellow. So this is a foreground color. That's the color with which we paint. And this is the color with which we fill. Those mean two different items. But now we really didn't want to do this. So we'll go to edit and undo. Now that we have black as our fill color, let's go to our fill tool and come out into our object and make that black. Now let's invert our mask. And now let's make our fill white. So that's right click on white. We'll go back to our, actually we already have our fill tool so we'll click out here. Now we are going to remove our mask altogether. So we'll clear the mask 
and we'll save this. File, save as. Let's make this, uh, let's call this Alex uh, Black. And we're using at this time a Corel Photo Paint image. Let's change that. Not that it particularly matters, just to show that we can do that. Let's go to a Windows bitmap. So now we're saving Alex Black dot BMP. And we're putting that in our scanning seminar file folder. Now we'll go to Corel Trace. Now that we're in Corel Trace, we'll open the file we just saved. As far as I know, there is no way to copy and paste that, so we must open it. So we call that Alex Black BMP. We'll open that. We'll change our zoom to about 35. And then instead of the advanced outline, we'll go to the regular outline. You'll have more options in advanced trace. We'll do that in a moment. But to begin with, we'll go to our standard trace, or just standard outline trace. And this is the accuracy. Let's make it uh, zero accuracy first and trace it. And we lost too much detail. Let's go to the other extreme and make that 100% accuracy and do the trace. And we actually have quite good detail. However, if we click over here, we'll see we have a huge amount of nodes. So let's see if we can reach some sort of a compromise, maybe a 50. We'll retrace it. Notice I'm watching the ears here, a little bit of a bump here, but relatively good uh, relationship of nodes. So let's use that. Edit and copy. Now we're in Corel Draw. We'll first create a new page. Let's make that. 5 inches wide, 7 inches tall. Then we'll edit and paste that which we created in Corel Trace. That throws it out in the middle of the page. I'm going to click on Arrange, Transformations, Positions, which should put that over in our list of dockers. We'll expand that and be sure it's on position. And we want that not in relative but absolute so the relative should relative position should not be checked. We'll make that zero from the left and seven inches from the bottom. That is that is we want the upper left hand corner zero inches to the right and seven inches from the bottom. We'll apply that. That'll slam that into the upper left hand corner. Then we'll go to edit and, and uh, view and wireframe. Now we'll see what we actually have. Notice also down in your status bar we're showing that we have a group of 15 objects. We're going to ungroup that We'll click off to deselect. Then we'll see what we really have. We have an outside rectangle, which we really don't want. So let's just delete that. We have some garbage also. I'm going to drag the box around uh, several portions of that to get rid of all of our garbage. Looks like we have it all.
and then just in there we're actually ready to cut that out we're ready to send that to our laser engraver and cut it out but to give you a little more idea how we uh, how that will work out let's go ahead and import our original photograph which was Alex Karate let's position that at exactly the same location that would be 0 and 7 the upper left hand corner absolute and apply that now let's send that to the background arrange order to back and then we'll view enhanced and possibly we'll select our part in here and make that no fill that's the left mouse button and let's make it a red outline then let's zoom in on that and we'll see what we have using the navigator we'll look around there looks good. So now if we put that photograph in our laser and print just the selected outline that's the proximity to the photograph to which it'll cut. Project completed.